In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can work with the text tool. So over on the side, this is our text tool. Once we click on it, we have a lot of different options on the top of what kind of font we can have, what value, bold, regular, italic, our size options, our color options. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how you can actually work with a path. So if I go over to my circle, I go up to the top and I make sure it's on a path, not on a shape. I am going to make a new layer. I don't want to draw on my other layers. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to make a larger circle path. What I want to do is click on my text tool and just start typing. I'm going to call this drink Champion Juice. So right now I wrote in all uppercase. If you want to have it in lowercase, we can start off with that and see what we like. So I have it going along the path. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. So I'm just highlighting it, it all. And 72 is the most we can put there. So let's try 125. I'm going to move it a little bit now. I also want to change the direction. So let's say that I'm not really liking it on the outside here and I want to make it in the inside. I'm going to go over to my path. So this was my first circle, that kind of salmon tone value there. This is my champion juice type path. What you want to do now is you want to go over to the side here and click on the direct selection tool. Here we can manipulate different values of our path. So if I wanted to, I can adjust my handles and I can give it kind of a funky curve. Or what I could do is I can hit Command or Control on your keyboard and flip it inside. Once you see that little arrowhead there, you can drag it inside. From here, I can go back to my text tool. I can adjust different values. I can also control T, bring up my transform box. I can rotate it around. Maybe I want to move it inside here. Because this layer is below her fingers, maybe I want to move it above. Maybe I want to widen out my path now. I can go back to my path. I can go over to my direct selection tool. I can click on this one point. I can drag it out. So you have a lot of different options of what you can do. I can go back to my layers. I can arrow key it down if I don't want it to touch it. I can even add blending options to this. I can go up to my blending options. I can put a white stroke value on it. And let's say that I want to have an outer glow now. With I can copy the same one here by eye dropping the tool. I can actually make it darker change it from screen to normal so it's at full value, full opacity, bring up your size and spread. From this point you might have to adjust your stroke, make your stroke a little bit larger. Then go back to the utter glow, make your size larger. Hit OK when you're happy. Maybe you want to bring that back on here because it blends in a little bit more. Maybe you want to just highlight the juice, change up the juice size. Maybe you want to change the color of this one. Champion juice. Maybe I want to add some yellow values into this photo now, a little bit more excitement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to use my pen tool. I'm going to zoom in. Control plus or Command plus zooms in. Turn out my history there. And I'm just going to make a 
couple of random shapes. So all I did was grab my pen tool and I made one click to another click. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt and I'm going to click on this point. Basically what that does is that allows me to control my curve the way that I want to control it. And right now it's set to path, which you could have it as a shape if you'd like to, but I just want to see where my path is going at this point. So now I have a full path. If I go over to the paths and I click on this, it is going to fill my shape. Because it is under the other layer, I couldn't see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of duplicate this. Gonna not quite match it up. Alt, kill that last curve. Alt, click on that, kill that last curve. And always when you're doing your pen tool, the first point and the last point have to meet. I'm going to go over to my paths. I'm going to fill it in again. And this time, I'm going to change my opacity value. I'm going to start playing around with that a bit. So I'll keep this one at about 20. And let's try what this one looks at at about 40. Maybe a little bit lower. And if I click on the background, and I zoom out a bit, we can see how things are starting to shape up. What I'm going to do now is just play around with it a little bit more until I'm happy. I want it a little bit stronger here. Now what I want to do is I want to mask out the bottom, almost like these are rays coming in. So if I hit this third one in, it creates a mask here. Anything I paint in black will go away and anything I paint in white will come back. I want to pick a blurry brush. So I have a blurry one and I want to pick a much larger brush size. So if I pick something at about 300, you'll see that my brush size got larger, but it's not big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click away from that. I'm going to use my bracket keys on my keyboard because I get a much better accurate size of my brush. And you can see that up at the top here, it went up to 2300. Now I have to make sure I'm on black. I can go up here and I can change it to 100%. Then if I do a couple of clicks, you will see that it is blending in better. Then I can go over to this one. Okay. and I can do a couple of clicks in here and then that is the look I was going for so I'm happy with this at this point. So here you have it on how to make a logo on a curve. Let's say you decide that you don't want to make a logo on a curve. So I'm just going to turn off that for the moment and what I want to do is I want to bring all mine in individually. So I will bring in a C. I'm just going to put this at the top. I'm also going to change the color. I'll change the color on the side here so that all of mine come in as black. And then and you have to just kind of keep clicking away for it to register. And then what you can do is you could actually go over and put them how you want. You can bring up the transform box. You can rotate it. Maybe you want to have some as larger, some as smaller fonts. You can do that as well. You have a lot of different options when you're dealing with text in Photoshop. Let's say you really love this look, you want to copy the layer style, 
I can go down onto my lips tool. I can right click and I can go to copy layer style. I can then go over to my first one, shift click so they're all selected. I can right click and hit paste layer style. Then I can adjust them accordingly because my layer style is taking up too much space now. If I want at this point, I can hit auto select layer and then I click on it and I can drag it, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click. And then if you want and you realize hey, this is just way too much of an outer glow. I can double click on the outer glow. I can change my size up to maybe 129. If I'm happy with that, I can hit OK. I can go back and say, um, this is kind of what I'm looking for, but maybe at this point I want to change the color. Maybe I'm just going to put a black glow on it. Hit OK. And do I want to do the exact same thing to all of them? No. So I'm going to right click, copy layer style. I'm going to click on the H, hold shift, click on the N, then right click and paste layer style. So we have that now and then I can just move my C in a little bit. And there you go. So that's how you can play around with the text in Photoshop. So give it a try.